and this is probably the most revealing photograph, where they show standard Messerschmitt turbojet engines that they were using for their fighter planes. Same fuel, same engines, attached on the side of the craft, would spin the craft around, and two more engines would push it forward. Here is your turbojet saucer, the biggest secret of the saucers. And believe it or not, I figured out for myself that this is true by reading the Urantia book where they were saying that, yeah, anti-gravity is proportional to the mass of the body, actually to the flywheel momentum, flywheel mass, and to the RPMs. That's exactly what the Germans were doing. By flattening the craft and making a large disk, they were maximizing the flywheel moment, momentum. And by using turbojets instead of propellers, they were maximizing the RPMs. So, basically, um, a Trinitarian revelation book gave me the secret, the theoretical secret for the <laughs> German flying saucer. The universe is extremely interrelated, holographic, uh, and strange. This is a photograph of the 50s of either turbojet or even rocket-powered craft with five engines spinning the craft around. This is probably the exterior disk that rotates. Everything else is constant. And we have some interesting aerodynamic effects which explains for these uh, uh, strange angles that the jets get out of the craft. This is a drawing of the Kugelblitz. It was carrying the oxidizer on board. Turbines were getting the exhaust gases through multiple porous outer shell that would make the whole thing glow in flight. And this is probably the only photograph that I know in the public domain of a Kugelblitz in flight, but not over Germany, but over the skies of uh, Washington State, Mount Rainier. Probably tested by the secret American program to test captured German weaponry or from the secret British facilities in northwestern Canada. They built a whole 50,000 strong secret research place to test the German saucer technology there. According to Renato Vespa, he's citing numerous uh, newspaper articles about the building of the railroads, about the building of the, of the roadways, about the building of the whole 50,000 city in just crash course construction probably in a, less than a year in order to get to the hundreds or thousands of boxcars that they took out of the underground establishments of Germany. They had so many stuff, maybe some of it is still sitting in, in unopened boxes. Uh, this is a, at the beginning they used kerosene, later on they used a lot more effective fuels, basically liquid aluminum, uh, jellies with aluminum inside that were, would greatly increase the temperature of combustion. And uh, there's probably another craft standing still here. This is the whole photograph. This is Mount Rainier in the in the in the beginning and in the background. I was told. I mean, we can talk for hours about the physics of smoke formation, flame formation, analysis of the smoke on the periphery, on the inside, the distribution of color. I mean, for somebody who's a physicist, there are so many details in this photograph. It's not a house. And that's uh, probably an internal combustion, kerosene-powered UFO that we see here. Then there were reports about an inboard turbojet engine craft, the Alonso Mita Schriever craft, that is depicted here in this photograph. And here are some of the earlier drawings. This is an attempt to explain it away as a ducted fan craft with just two propellers, which is a, basically a debunking effort. And uh, here, can we do a little bit on the proper screens? In the, what is it, 1950-something, uh, Look magazine. In the Look magazine, there was an article about underground saucer bases as a solution for the future that would be prone to nuclear attacks. 1954, I think, Look magazine. 
And uh, it will come. And uh, there's a cutout drawing made by an aviation engineer. Avatar Bujet Sosa, the pilot lies in a prone position in a cabin that gyroscopically stabilized. It's, it's the only thing that does not rotate. The landing pods do not rotate for obvious reasons. And the rocket container, the rocket pod, also is attached to the cabin. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to shoot a target with rockets that are mounted on a spinning platform. Everything else spins. The whole body of the craft spins one way, including the fuel tanks. If you spin the fuel tanks, you, you would lose their weight. Everything loses weight. The compressor ring coupled to the gas turbine ring here spin the other way. So basically to the reaction of the engine relative to the compressor, you can spin the, 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 the craft itself. The air goes in, compressed through the compressor, goes through the combustion chambers, drive the turbine, a typical turbojet combination, and gets out through these exhaust pipes. Possibly doctor a little bit, I think they were tangential to spin the craft further. And uh, in 55, this is a photograph of the real Avro car that was never unveiled to the public. And here we see that it's different from that Mickey Mouse Avro car. Here the turbine is in the periphery and the engine is in uh, the cabin is in the middle. The Mickey Mouse Avro car was the other way around. The turbine was in the middle. The uh, cockpit was on the periphery. Everything rotates in the periphery, creating quite a powerful gyroscopic and gravity lift effect. Uh, and there are probably multiple nozzles on the periphery, spinning the craft. This is a photograph, and this is a hypersonic cabin that would, would send probably Mach 3, 4, 5, 6, I don't know how much. But this is a cabin of the type they were mounting on their X-15s and up. The Blackbird has a similar cabin. This is a hypersonic cabin that we have here. And this is a gun camera picture of an uh, Argentinian fighter plane chasing a craft, quite probably this craft. This is the cabin. <coughs> this here is this one. This slanted edge here, clearly visible, is this slanted edge here. I think this is the gang camera footage of a secret American overflight of Argentinian territory. And this is a schematic drawing of how the engine was working. Air would be sucked in, compressed by the compressor, go through the combustion chamber, greatly expands through combustion, drives the uh, turbine, releasing some of its energy that goes back through the shaft to drive the compressor. Most of the energy goes through the exhaust pipe and is used to spin the craft around. Simple as that. Simple as that. And the cabin is gyroscopically stabilized in the middle. What the Germans did, they took a standard salami-shaped turbojet engine and performed a topological transformation on it. They flattened it, lowered the height, and increased the diameter. So basically from here, they transform it into a flattened ring, then open a hole in the middle and drop the cabin in the hole. Otherwise, this is the same engine as any other turbojet engine. Just a little bit of a continuous topographical, I'm sorry, topological, topological transformation. And instead of the exhaust coming in the back, they redirected the exhaust to the periphery to maximize the spinning effect. The first inboard turbojet engine uh, saucer in the world. Even in the Project Blue Book, we have in the cover a government craft. For this in the know, this is another debunking ploy that would say, ah, don't worry UFOs, my left foot. I mean, these are probably government craft secretly run by the saucer boys. I mean, many of these things are such a, a subtle, fine debunking effort. And this is a photograph of such a craft in flight. A lot of the craft in the 50s were leaving these contrails behind. And these shiny gaseous clouds. Is that giant rock I have no idea. No idea where this is, but I can...